Hello, New York Giants fans. Welcome back to Everything New York Giants with New York Giants Fangirl. My name's Adriana. I'm your host. And today I am joined by Sean Marash, who is on WFAN with Evan and Tiki, is a Rangers, Giants, and Yankees fan. So we might get into a little Yankees talk today as well. We are going to start with all things Giants. So hello, Sean. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. I'm excited to be here. What's going on? Yes, hopefully the Yankees and Rangers deliver us a lot happier moments than the Giants have this past year. I'm waiting on one of them because I need someone to, like you said, bring us a little bit of joy because it's been rough. Totally. I've had it. I've absolutely had it with just going into every fall and feeling like my football season's been robbed by Halloween. Last year... I thought my predictions all off season were they were going to go 11 and six. And I was, I was really believing it. I was like, we made all these awesome free agency moves. And then Andrew Thomas gets injured week one. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, I was on the 10 and seven train. I'm glad you mentioned Andrew Thomas because look, I, I get all the Daniel Jones hate or whatever, but the moment he went down and you're playing Josh Azudu, who is not a tackle at left tackle, the season was absolutely kaput. Uh, and it's not as sexy as the Aaron Rodgers injury with the Jets, but it absolutely doomed mm -hmm. the Giants from the get-go as well. No question. And I agree with you. Like, I was surprised that so many people were not thinking about that. Like, to an extent, yes, but everyone was like, oh, well, if it wasn't for Jones and if he got injured. But then as soon as Tyrod started playing, everyone was like, oh, well, Tyrod can throw the long ball. And Tyrod, the offense looks better. He can yeah. run it better. And Jones is the problem. I'm like, Andrew Thomas has been out for a third of the season. A hundred percent. By the way, it was yeah, exactly. No secret. Andrew Thomas played. And oh, and oh, by the way, when Evan Neal went down and Tyree Phillips played right tackle, they had competent tackle play. And that is how Tommy DeVito and Tyrod Taylor both ended up playing. I, I mean, I wouldn't even call it good football, but enough football that the team could function and win and look like an offense. Yeah. Ugh, now, now it's just digging up deep scars. I mean, I get very annoyed. I fight the, fight the good fight with this. All right, so let's that's a perfect transition to talk about free agency now because my my biggest off-season get that I want to see in free agency is a right tackle. And I don't expect them to give up on Evan Neal. I I'm not one of those people who's like he's a bust, we need to cut him whatever. They're not going to do that. He was a top 10 pick. So, I'm not on board with just sending him off into the sun, but I do think that it's worth at this point moving him to right guard and bringing in a right tackle. And my number one guy that would say, I don't care how much money you pay him, just get him in here, is Mike Unwenu. He's a good right tackle. He's worked with Carmen Priscillo, who's the new Giants O-line coach. And then maybe you move Evan Neal to guard, and maybe he's in a better position at guard when he is a stud right tackle next to him. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm in complete agreement. That's the guy to get. Look, I'm not going to act like I sat there and studied the right tackle and right guard play of the New England Patriots to tell you how great he is, but I trust everybody who's done the work on that. Uh, and look, this is the time, right? And I, by the way, it's more than that. I would sign another guard. And if Evan Neal has to play left guard next to Andrew Thomas, and all you could do is get a right guard, there's been already some names bounded about whether it's Robert Hunt, the license plate guy mm -hmm. threw that out there. Uh, oh the Giants God, need to make two. Too. Yeah, they need to make two splashes on the offensive line because I think we all as Giant fans can agree on, on this premise. Whoever you want to be the quarterback becomes an irrelevant argument. We know one of yeah. two things is going to be true. Either Daniel Jones really is going to be the quarterback and this isn't smokescreen and he's going to come back and play quarterback or they are either going to move up in the draft or take somebody late first round trade back in, maybe a Michael Penick, something like that. Whatever avenue they go, whoever their quarterback is, if it's Daniel Jones, you don't want to keep having the argument that he doesn't have an offensive line in front of him. And if it's mm -hmm. a young rookie, you don't want him flim flammering and failing the way Jones did early on or the end of Eli Manning's career because they didn't have the offensive line. So to me, yeah, wide receiver feels like a nice ad. They definitely need to add pass rush. We know they have a million holes. They need to come out of free agency with two offensive linemen that aren't question marks that will shore up things. And I'm not asking for an all pro, all five linemen being the most unbelievable pro bowlers, but they need a functional offensive line here because that helps shore up the quarterback question above anything else. And no matter what they decide a quarterback, it has to go behind getting two linemen in free agency. That's exactly how I feel. And I know everyone you know, there were a lot of fans who, with the whole Russ Wilson thing, were like, 
bring in Russ Wilson. He's automatically going to be better than Jones and DeVito and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I get that, but he's also going to get sacked 50 times if we don't do something about the line. And I feel the same way. I am not expecting them, especially at this point, literally overnight, to bring in five all pros. We have Andrew Thomas. We have John Michael Schmitz, who I think is going to be fine. Yeah, you should take the next step. Especially with Carmen Brasillo, like you said. Take that another step with with a real coach in there. Absolutely. Yes. And if we have, you know, if Bredesen is serviceable at left guard, I think if, the left if they the time, re-sign him, if they re-sign yeah. Bredesen, which is another part of this. So we'll see what kind of money he gets. Well, so th- let's talk about that for a second, because between him and Pugh, listen, if Sean Lemieux isn't the, Shane Lemieux isn't the first person cut on this roster, like, I, I don't understand what's going on there, because the fact that him and Matt Pert are still on this team is absolutely mind boggling to me. But you think like him, Pew, obviously they already cut Glowinski. You think either of those guys come back? Uh, Yeah. I I mean, I I don't, it's hard to say. First of all, Bredesen would be the guy I would bring back because he seemed like a formidable enough starter, but clearly he has an injury history as well. And that's killed the team. How many injuries they had. What happens with Josh Azudu, who's definitely going to be on this team. And it feels like they wasted the second year of his career, not, you know, keeping him at guard, having to move him to tackle because they kept no swing tackle on the roster. It's hard to say. It really comes down to what they swing at in free agency. And if they connect on on too early, a guard, a tackle, like if they don't get a, a Onenwu, I don't know who's going to play right tackle than Evan Neal to begin yeah. with. So that might, you know, that might be something they have to keep with it. Bring back Tyree Phillips, who's coming back from a big injury. But you know, it's in a spot where if they connect on two big free agents, I su- I suspect they may just go bargain bin hunting. It wouldn't shock me if none of the old regime are out. And it's like, they're just trying to completely clean house on what they had on the offensive line, even if that does include Bredesen. So it's definitely the most intriguing position to watch on, on who comes back and who goes, but this is just in significant upgrade time. Cause again, this is for Joe Shane. This is such an enormous off season and you cannot, I mean, how many years in a row you cannot enter next off season, whether Shane has the job or not wondering, you know, if the team could shore up the offensive line, it's got to be done now. And they have the cap space to do it. Yeah, I agree. And there's actually going to be good options in free agency. Yes. Like we could have all this yeah. cap space and there could be no one available, but we actually are going to have the opportunity no, to bring in two potentially really you're, good players. You're playing in a pool of depth. There's no doubt about it. So just selecting those right guys got, you know, Jonah Jackson's another guy's been mentioned the lines. He's been hurt a lot. Mm-hmm. Guys that got to stay on the field though, too. I mean, how many seasons are going to get ruined with injuries to the offensive line where they can't get any chemistry either. So that's just such a big part of it. I, and, Look, again, they can sign any wide receiver they want, any pass rusher they want. Maybe they trade for Brian Burns, something like that. I will be ultimately mm-hmm. disappointed in this offseason if I don't see two starters on the offensive line signed here. Yeah, to me, that's the number one priority in free agency, and anything outside of that is a bonus. But I just saw that, according to Ian Rappaport, um, T. Higgins has requested a trade. Whoa. So do you see You're breaking news to me. I just saw it a minute ago. So do you see any scenario where the Giants trade for him to come in? Because again, there's a whole other conversation too that we got to have a number one wide receiver and blah, blah, blah. So cost obviously is a big thing. The uh, the Bengals tagged him. He's going to get an enormous contract. I don't have an issue with going out and trying to get a number one stud playmaker and then having Hyatt and Wandell be your number two and number three. Um, Mm -hmm. It's in the draft, though, if you're not going to trade up for a quarterback and you sit back at six, that seems like the sweet spot to get one of the big three wide receivers. So do I want to give up the capital of a second round pick and pay T Higgins if, in essence, that's where I'm going in the first round? And also, if they trade for T Higgins, think about it this way. You're probably giving up capital if you have a dream of moving up to, like, let's say, New England's third pick, if they are right. in a position where they want to do that. So. My, look, if we're playing fantasy football, yeah, clearly I'd love T. Higgins to be the number one wide receiver. But if I think about it logistically and what the Giants need asset wise, whether it's quarterback or even then taking the wide receiver, uh, I think either of those paths come back to it's probably not smart business to trade anything for for a wide receiver right now. That's my biggest argument when people are like, you know, the Giants need to trade up and get Drake May or Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is like my favorite player coming out of the draft. I, I would love, love him. Very it's light, but amazing. you get him in a weight room. Right. Yeah, that's what I think. Put some muscle on like Cordell Flott did. But I don't see it being an issue. But I am not willing to trade everything we would need to trade to move from six to three. And then you're also assuming that those other teams are willing to trade with us in the first place. The Patriots just traded away Mac Jones. They have no quarterback. You think they're going to trade with us to get J.J. McCarthy at six? I don't see it. 
The I so I agree. However, the the draft is weird. There's a couple caveats that could happen. Number one, JJ McCarthy could jump Drake May in general and go top three, that. and then that's and that for, sign me up because I'm not a JJ McCarthy guy. So let that happen. Same. Number two, I mean, the golden question now becomes: Will Russell Wilson go into the Steelers? And and who knows? By the time this is out, maybe Kirk Cousins has made a decision or not. Justin Fields, if the Bears are going to take Caleb Williams, yeah. is Justin Fields for, say, a second-round pick more appealing to the New England Patriots if well, maybe New England only likes Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams and they go one and two? That's who Washington takes, and they're not big on McCarthy. Maybe they that's in a spot on draft night where they trade for Justin Fields. Uh, and then that you know tr- causes a trickle-down, or they stay put and take a wide receiver. So you know, the, I think that's still out there where the Giants could either move up. Maybe they move up one spot with, you know, the Chargers if other teams are trying to trade up or something like that. So they keep their assets. But I, I assume the big three quarterbacks go one, two, and three. But I, I've covered plenty of drafts back. I was stunned the, the, the night that Blake Bortles went as high as he did to the Jaguars. I, I am open to be shocked. And if surprise leads to a benefit of the Giants, uh, sign mm-hmm. me up. Yeah, that's how I feel. And I don't know how you feel about mock drafts, but – People send me their mock drafts like for months now, and I do one or two of them close to the draft. I'm a, it's I'm a sucker. Whenever. I'm a sucker for them, but I'm the first one to criticize how meaningless they are. <laughs> right, exactly. Like you know, the reality is draft night. No one knows what's going to happen. Right. Um. I the only way that I would be really disappointed and pissed off at this team is at six they pick JJ McCarthy. That is the only thing that is really going to send me into another dimension of It'll anger. be the Daniel Jones thing all over again. And again, 100%. I, I Again, I, I come from the camp of I like Daniel Jones more than others. However, I'm tired mm-hmm. of the injury stuff. That yeah. being said, that was the biggest problem that night, right? Was who's really taking Daniel Jones that high? Take Josh Allen. You have that other pick at 17. Now again, they end up with Dexter Lawrence out of it. People ignore that argument. But, I, you know, if you're sitting there and you take JJ McCarthy at six and the three receivers are gone, that mean I mean the three quarterbacks are gone. That means one of the three big wide receivers is there, both offensive linemen are there, Brock Bowers. You're gonna give up that kind of talent, or there are, you know, DJ Turner, the pass rusher. There's so many clearly better players than JJ McCarthy that if you're yeah. totally wrong on JJ McCarthy, or even if you're half right on JJ McCarthy, he ha- he'd have to become an elite top five quarterback to justify passing on some of these people to take him at sixth overall. So I really hope that's not the case. Uh, but by the way, I'm, I'm prepared also to to eat you-know-what and be wrong. I've clearly evaluated quarterbacks have been wrong before. I thought Josh Rosen was going to mm-hmm. be awesome. He stunk. So if you're going to take J.J. McCarthy, you better be right, and I better be yeah. wrong, or most of us better be wrong. I just It would make me sick to my stomach on draft night. Yes, and I feel the same way. And I was like that with Daniel Jones. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. This is who they picked at six. Along but I with bet you within else. a week you sold yourself on it, right? Because we're Giant fans and that's what we do. Yes, that's exactly my thing. It's like I am willing – I I make this joke all the time that Jarnay Holmes drives me up a fucking wall. <laughs> he just drives me nuts. I'm so sick of seeing him play. He can play on special teams, but I don't ever want to see him in the slot cornerback position ever again. And I'm like, if he turned it around on the field, I would be his number one fan. Of course. I am happy to do a 180. I want to root for these guys to win, and if, uh, like, if that happens with J.J. McCarthy and they pick him, I will get over it. But I just am like, like you said, there are way better players to pick at six. Of and course. there is pretty much no expert who thinks that picking J.J. at six Look, is a good move for the Giants. And by the way, when you're thinking about J.J. McCarthy at six, think about Evan Neal. That team had two first-round picks. And I love Kayvon Thibodeau. I think he gets like a bum rap. But even mm-hmm. with two first-round picks, top ten picks, missing on one of them still feels like they set the team back because, look, we're scrambling. Right. Who's going to play right tackle? You can't miss in this draft with the sixth overall pick. You just can't. And and if if it's a quarterback and you hit, I that's what I prefer. But you can't force a quarterback if the top three are gone. You need right. to come away with a big time player here. There's just there's no other way around it because missing on this only further sets the wheels back. Especially knowing that we have two early f- second rounders. So if you wanted yeah. to trade back into the first to get Michael Penix or Bo Nix, whatever, then happen. you still have that option. I, I for right. some reason the more that the weeks that have gone by the more I feel like that's a possibility like they take Roma Dunze the Washington wide receiver and they pair no. him with Penix by like who knows the Chiefs at 32 and the reason you would trade obviously back in to the first round is to if you're taking a quarterback to grab that fifth year option which we've seen mm-hmm. it happened with Lamar Jackson it happened with Teddy Bridgewater those teams at the end if you want to grab a guy and make sure you're short for the other year you trade back in I, I could totally see that being in play for the Giants 
Yeah. So what do you think at six? Do you think if Waller retires, they entertain Bowers at that position? You think they go after a tight end in free agency? Well, I'm kind of pissed at him that he's even considering I'm, I'm, this right now. Like, come so, on, bro. Give it one more year. Then you I'm can the, do whatever you want. I'm the same way. However, he's already at least left the breadcrumbs that he's thinking about retirement, which means even if he plays this year, he's, it's probably his last year. So to me, right. look, I'm. I think Brock Bowers has to possibly be great. A tight end mm -hmm. might sit wrong with me at sixth overall. Uh, you better make sure you're using them right, this, that, and the other thing. But if you do like Brock Bowers, Darren Waller's decision to retire or not should not prevent you from that. Number one, he's hurt all the time anyway. Number two, you're right. drafting Brock Bowers. In theory, any guy you take at six, you're hoping to have for the next decade, let's say. Like, that's the, the dream scenario, right, in the NFL? So I'm not worried about one year of Brock Bowers if Darren – so what? You pair him for a year. So to me, Waller should be completely irrelevant to the Giants' plans. Operate as if he's going to be there, but – don't trust that he's going to be there because even if he's there, he might get hurt. So the tight, yeah. they need to add a blocking tight end regardless. I wouldn't mind Daniel Bellinger going back to being the number one tight end. He showed enough in the pass catching game in year one. Clearly with Waller, they went away from that in year two and they didn't have enough blocking tight ends on the roster anyway, but they will figure out and piecemeal. Think about where we were two years ago at tight end. I mean, they, it felt like they had nobody at the position whatsoever and they got by and made the playoffs and Bellinger was a good player for them. So uh, yeah. yeah, Darren Waller's not stopping me or or f further forcing me for whatever I want to do with tight end this year. Yeah, definitely a position that they need to upgrade. And I don't expect them to go into this season with or without Waller and then have someone like Lawrence Cager on the roster. Like I expect right. some sort of update right. there at some point. They have to. What does your ideal offseason look like for the Giants when it comes to free agency? We already talked about um, – the offensive line like in regards to McKinney, Saquon, if McKinney goes, do you want to safety in free agency? How do you feel about that? All right. So I am in the camp of if Saquon's back and or McKinney's back. Good. I'm good with it. I don't want to overspend on Saquon specifically because of the running back, but mm -hmm. like if it's a reasonable deal, fine. If both of them are gone, I'm also good. Uh, Look, I got a little tired of the McKinney stuff. Even if he's played every snap this year, this, that, and the other thing, he always seemed to have something to say. His Twitter annoys the hell out of me. Oh. So maybe I'm being nitpicky. Maybe I become the old man in the room. I don't know. I'm cool if McKinney walks because last year I saw Julian Love walk and I saw Jason Pinnock pick up the slack. No problem. I kind of mm -hmm. like Dane Belton. And let's see. It, it doesn't mean they won't add a safety in free agency. It's also a new defensive coordinator, Shane Bowen. So what? Right. let's see. I'm fine if they're gone. That being said, what this team can have happen or it needs to have happen, I should say. I mentioned two offensive linemen starting ones. Again, it doesn't have to be all pros. Figure this out. These guys need to be starters. They need a starting corner next to Deontay Banks. So if Dory yeah. Jackson's not going to come back, I know Darius Williams right now is in there taking a physical. That would be, to me, a perfect kind of guy. Bridge the gap two, three years. You don't have to worry about taking a corner in the first round the next two years, something like that. Cornerback, offensive line. And then in terms of the draft, let's pretend – that they have all three of those picks, the two second rounders in the first for a second, and they don't trade. Ideally, okay. yeah, I'd like a quarterback. If they don't, those picks need to be, in my opinion, wide receiver. Uh, I wouldn't even mind investing in another offensive lineman. And they just, they need another guy who can go get after the quarterback pass rush wise. You can't mm -hmm. trust Aziz Ojolari to stay healthy. So yep. even if Kayvon Thib I expect Kayvon Thibodeau to keep getting better and be a true alpha number one DN pass rusher, but yeah, go find another pass rusher as well. So pass rush quarterback in some way, shape or form, ideally one of the big three wide receiver, two starting offensive linemen and a corner. If I come out of this between free agency and the draft with that, Whatever you do, third round, fourth round of the draft, I'm just assuming best player available, figure that out, running back, yeah. something like that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's the dream scenario. And they can't afford not to come out of this with like three starters out of this draft yeah. either. You know, and that includes a third round or a fourth round. Or figure this out. The, these other good teams, you look up, oh, this guy was taken in the fifth round. You need starters to come out of this. You can't be missing. Like if Cordell Flott's a miss, you can't have that happen again. Yeah. Well, especially when you look at teams like the Lions, like what they did in one year where they had three or four players who not only were starters, were pro bowler. I mean, think about it. You can't get away think with not doing that. The Lions are a perfect example. Jamison Williams, they used a first round pick on. 
you know, okay, he's made a couple speed burn plays, but he's clearly not been worthy of a first round pick for what he's brought to the table between suspensions and otherwise. And they used a first round pick on a running back and Jameer Gibbs was awesome. But, you know, giant land, we all know first round picks on running backs are a real problem, but because they hit mm -hmm. everywhere else throughout those last couple right. drafts, they're an awesome team. You know, Amon Ross mm -hmm. St. Brown, think about how many wide receivers were taken for him. It's the giants need to figure this out. They need to stop not having fourth rounders, fifth rounders contribute in any way, shape, or form outside of Cam Brown being a special teamer. Right. Well, and even someone like Eric Gray, I mean, I expect him oh. to have a bigger role this year because I don't expect them to resign. Oh, Matt Rita. How? Yeah. how do all of these teams figure this out with a running back mid to late round that just, oh, it's plug and play and they're good. Eric Gray misses yeah. half the year. They're having him return punts. He doesn't know how to return punts. Oh he my God. Yes. Showed some burst at the end of the year, but I would have felt a little more comfortable with Saquon Barkley walking if they had legitimate running back snaps for Eric Gray last year. How does right. every other team figure out the late round running back and the Giants couldn't even do that last year? Yeah. Why are you using Matt Breida in there? Right. You right. draft this guy. Isn't that what he's supposed to be doing? Or, or you see on, like uh, Josh Corbin last year. I would have liked to see him a little more as an mm -hmm. undrafted rookie. All these other teams figured out at running back and yet the Giants can't. Yeah. We leave a lot to be desired. A lot of question marks there. Yes. Um, speaking of Gunner, I expect any second to hear that Gunner has be re been resigned to at I least a so. two-year deal because he's been one of the best players on this team. And outside of that, um, defensive lineman was, I know we talked about edge, but do you think, I would like to see them bring back Sean Robinson. I think he yeah, did a great job last year. He was one of the, the better young, guys next to Dexter. 29 years old. He's in the younger side of the pool. Uh, I know D'Amico Autry, uh, the guy from the Titans that played with Bowen, he had you mm. know a double-digit sack year. Maybe Because, remember, there's a new defensive coordinator he's going to put his imprint possibly. But, you know, we, we're sitting here complaining about drift. I know that we're talking about seventh-round picks here, but DJ Davidson and Jordan Riley are two yeah. guys that can one of them be a player? Can can we figure this out with steps? Can one of the, Can we hit on one of the two? I don't think that's much to ask. So, you got to hope. And they still have Nacho on the team. So it's clearly become an important position. D tackle six years ago felt like it was going out out the window. Now every all the highest paid players are there. But yeah, get another veteran next to next to Dexter Lawrence. But ultimately, I would hope halfway through the year, one of those two young guys that they've drafted in each of the last two years is taking up significant snaps next to Dexter Lawrence. And maybe, and by the way, maybe that's one of their second round picks as a T tackle, something like that. That's what I'm I'm wondering too, and I'm curious to see if that's a position that they'll consider or go after in free agency, or if that's something that they figure, you know, we have DJ Davidson, Nacho, if we bring back Ashawn Robinson, and you know, even someone like Trey Hawkins, like these are the guys that, you know, no expectations for Trey Hawkins, and then he comes in no. and looks pretty good at camp. So, like, these are the guys that, you know, I you almost forget he's on the team, team, right? Isn't that funny? Yeah. We almost forget he was on the team when he was starting to be in the last year. And by the way, surprise us. Maybe he ends up being, yeah. I, I, and he wouldn't prohibit me from signing somebody, but maybe, you know, somebody goes down this year for a little bit. Who, if it's Darius Williams and Dante, Deontay Banks start. Maybe Trey Hawkins is, is a player, but you certainly shouldn't bank on that going into the year that he's a starting kind of player. Yeah, they need to be. They need more depth. I feel like across the board, that's probably the biggest thing. So with veteran quarterbacks, Obviously, the Russ Wilson thing is out the door. Mm -hmm. um, I heard, and I don't know how true this is, that Tyrod allegedly said not want to be in New York anymore. And it sounds like that, I mean, I don't know how much they're willing to pay a back quarterback, but according to Jordan Renan, it sounds like they're definitely going to bring in a back quarterback. Yeah. Who do you think, now that Russ Wilson is out the door, do you have any ideas who you think they would bring in? Like maybe someone like a Minshew? Yeah, I mean, Minshew is clearly the... Minshew is clearly the sexier name because he could play. Jones goes down, something like that. I would like that. I wouldn't mind Jacoby Brissett. I'm very happy Mitchell Trubisky's off the board, and it's not going to be him. Ultimately, mm -hmm. it comes down to if you really have to play this guy significant snaps, the Giants are probably in trouble anyway. But at least I know Gardner Minshew, of all the names that will be out there, is a guy that can navigate you to a winning kind of year and play winning kind of football. So that would be, that would be the name that I'd look out for. By the way, as far as Terod Taylor goes, He's, he's a pro. I, I met him. Nice guy. All of that. You know, to be a backup quarterback in this league, one of the most important things for me is health. And just like yeah. Daniel Jones, Rod Taylor, is hard. I mean, it sucks for him. I feel bad for him. But I can't sign a backup quarterback knowing Daniel Jones is always hurt and mm -hmm. or, you know, trying to groom a rookie. If I, I feel like I have to hold my breath every time the backup quarterback drops back that he's not going to get hurt. And that right. is to Rod Taylor. So to me, it's a mutual parting of ways. 
I'm good with it. Thank you to Rod Taylor. But I, mm-hmm. I, I just don't view him as, to me, checking the boxes of everybody goes because he could throw a good deep ball. What a good backup that is to have. To me, it's not a good backup to have because he's not healthy. And you got to be healthy to right. be a backup quarterback. Right. Well, we saw it last year. And I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately is I wasn't sure that they were going to go veteran quarterback because we know we they have – cutlets on the roster for another two years. And then we assume they're going to go quarterback in the draft. So is there the possibility that cutlets is the number two? And I'm kind of like 50, 50 on that. I don't know, but I saw that you met his family. So tell me about that. Because they look like they are prime Italians. I'm Italian. I love it. I think it's amazing. They totally are. And actually it just got announced this morning on Boomer and Geo on May 3rd, uh, Tommy Cutlets himself is going to roll me around an egg and breadcrumb and make me a uh, a human chicken cutlet on stage. So I have more Tommy, uh, more Tommy DeVito stuff coming up. Um, okay. He hired uh, an agency that I work with as well, talent agency. So I have fortunately get lucked into uh, the DeVito stuff. I'll just say this about DeVito. I like him. I think mm-hmm. he clearly he could play that he won those games. I do think that while he's owned his 15 minutes of fame, Tommy DeVito probably needs to go back into the, you know, the video room and all this other stuff and maybe focus on some of that. And I, I, I do think there was a portion of the giants, let's say hierarchy that wasn't thrilled with how, how far DeVito was going with the 15 minutes of fame stuff. And I think that I could see that that could have hurt him a little bit here in the off season. But the bottom line is this, I think the giants are in a scenario where you shouldn't not sign a veteran quarterback because Tommy DeVito's here and you shouldn't not yeah. sign a veteran quarterback, assuming you'll get one in the draft, because unless you've already shirt up a trade up to number three, which wouldn't happen until draft night, you can't afford for the room just to be Daniel Jones and Tommy DeVito and get caught with mm-hmm. neither uh, a, a rookie quarterback or not. So if they sign a veteran cheap and they have Daniel Jones and they have a rookie, yeah, they're going to carry three quarterbacks on the active roster. Where does that leave DeVito? He will, they will try to sneak him through to the practice squad. And if another team vies him viable for a backup, then they would lose him. And I, and that's a game the Giants, I think, are willing to have. But yeah, I would love for Tommy DeVito to be here. But I also understand the standpoint of you cannot trust him yet to be your number two. But I think there's plenty of there to assume that at some point in his career, he will be a number two in this league. Well, well, that was also an argument with people, too, saying, well, why would we sign Russ Wilson or any other veteran quarterback when we're going to draft one? And I'm like, I mean, if they draft Spencer Rattler in round three and Daniel Jones goes down, you think they're going to put Spencer Rattler in? I don't think so. No, because it would be a a learning year. And by the way, with Jaden Daniels or Drake May, maybe maybe for them it benefits them just sitting for a year regardless. Uh, And much like Russell Wilson last year with his contract, Daniel Jones with his injury guarantees and all that, they might get to a point where if Daniel Jones, you know, isn't playing them into the playoffs and the rookies either playing or they need the veteran to play where they just don't want Jones to get hurt because then they can't cut him after the year. So they might have to sit him down regardless. So yeah, signing a veteran is not going to prohibit them from drafting anyone, but they definitely need to just to pad this roster. And if that means DeVito's unfortunately the odd man out, well, hopefully he sticks around in the practice squad. And then we're looking at 2025 as a year where he could be on the active roster as a backup, depending on who's here. Yeah, well, and especially because we really don't know what the offensive line is going to be. And I would never throw any sort of rookie quarterback, whether no. it's Caleb Williams or Spencer Rattler. You ruin him right away. That mix. Ruin him right away. So I know you have to go, but I just want to ask you qu- quickly, what do you think about the Yankees this year? Oof. How are you feeling? So I am... I'm extra giddy for the Yankees this year. Usually I can kind of be a Debbie Downer. Uh, I'm not a big, like, keep Cashman guy. But Juan Soto has yeah. looked so freaking good in spring training. And not that spring training should be the the end-all, be-all, but they have a chance. He, he's everything that Giancarlo Stanton hasn't been. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a little bit in a hold-your-breath moment. Like, as we talk right now, Aaron Judge is not in a, a lineup today and got pulled after two at Badchester, so I'm hoping he's not hurt. It's going to come down to starting pitching, though. Other than Garrett Cole, I like Clark Schmidt a lot. I think I'm higher than most Yankee fans. I think by the end of the year, he has a chance to be, like, their number two, number three. But mm-hmm. Nestor Cortez, Carlos Rodon, they've not had great springs. they got to pitch well. But yep. other than that, I just I think this lineup's going to mash. I think them and the Orioles are going to be right there at the top. Uh, I'm not as f- – I know it's, you know – Come back to bite me. I'm not as fearful of the Astros. Now, Joe Espada is their manager. Uh, I just, I think it has to potentially be a really fun summer in the Bronx. I'm really, really excited for Yankee baseball. Uh, and if they didn't make the play, that's a bare minimum. If they didn't make the playoffs like last year, it, it, it would be a catastrophic type of season. I'm fully yeah. expecting them to be very relevant, be at least in the ALCS, and then either slay the Astros, maybe it's the Orioles in their way, but I think it's going to be a really, really fun summer. 
wouldn't that be a treat to finally beat the Astros? Oh my God. It'd be like the Giants finally beating the Eagles like they did the last week, but only better. I know. And I, I have to say, I'm with Tiki on this. If Saquon goes to the Eagles, I am. <laughs> I understand business is business, but I am really going to be upset with him. I, I can't root for no. him ever. Yeah. By the way, may make it easier to root against him. May make what should make it easier. But yeah, yeah. T- Tiki's very much a legacy guy and he knows that well. You know, there was a part of his legacy. I think he felt probably like slightly uh, in the public eye tarnished when he left that early. But I think time has healed wounds. The idea that he was only a mm-hmm. giant. Uh, clearly yeah. he's still beloved by people our age specifically because, you know, he was the guy of our generation. So he knows a thing or two about that. And I think he really, you know, if he ever went to Philly, that would have been the end of Tiki in New York. And I think he understands that. For no Saquon. question. Yeah. Agreed. So let's hope Saquon makes the smart decision. If he's not here with the giants, we'll probably find out by end of day today, but yeah. thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to get this out there and let's hope that we sign a right tackle and a right guard in the next 48 hours. I hope so. I hope so. Let's do it again before the season. Yes.